congrats. I mean, I just by looking and following you, I see that you've been a leader in a number of media organizations and then you're an independent director also in, an, uh, let's say, in a number of Fortune 500 companies. And now you have this entrepreneurial venture to build a sustainable uh, business. All of this takes a lot of energy, enthusiasm and drive. Now, how do you take care of yourself, Apurva, to do all of this? Uh, Shipya, so, you know, I think all, all of us, all of us have incredible potential and all of us can do many things. I personally, my sort of hacks, if you were, are uh, two things. One is I do carve out a lot of time for reflection, uh, me time, time alone. So that sort of gives me the recharging moments, sitting alone by myself. Um, locked up in her room or in my cabin with just, just just no noise no distractions nothing around me to just reflect and then then you draw energy I think all of us draw it from from within us um, the, the second thing is that you always feel that all of us have been given so many you know skills talents opportunities how do you keep on maximizing and bettering so becoming the best version with with the circumstances you have and the skills you have so that is a very strong driver for me. Correct. I don't want to lose any moment or lose any opportunity. So I think these two things put together, one external, one more internal, helps me uh, wear many hats, as you say. I know. Does the mindset of the hockey player still show up, Purva? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, in, in, in two ways. So I would say one is in, in, in being a team player so you recognize that you may be a leader you may be the captain you may be the coach but you can't do anything without the players so constantly trying to work in alignment and uh, in collaboration with so today with my new startup I, I was just discussing over lunch that I was used to talking to CEOs and senior people and now I'm working with a whole bunch of very bright youngsters right. but again you rec whether they are CEOs or they are youngsters or middle management, you require a good team around you. Correct. So the moment you understand that you require that team around you, you make sure that A, you get and you hold them together. Correct, correct, correct. So for me, that was the biggest learning out of hockey. Now I see that this venture with your son, right? And two different generations at play there. So how do you kind of bring, uh, you know, the best, things out of both of you into this venture, Apurva? <laughs> uh, I think there has to be one thing, Shripa, there has to be a common purpose. So if the purpose is not the same, then uh, whether it's son or whether it is parent or whether it is sister, you'll not be able to, or whether it is just uh, a team member in an organization, you will not be able to work together in alignment. So for me and my son, the the, the purpose that, it, that we want to do something which is uh, sustainable, as you said, or, or or something that works with women and encourages women empowerment. It looks at uh, 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 financial em uh, empowerment for the bottom of the pyramid. So our entire venture, Azul, is for, for uh, the bottom of the pyramid for women, um, sourcing great food to give to uh, uh, health conscious consumers. Correct. Now, the purpose was common and therefore that alignment was there initially. Then how do you bring two very different generations together, which is your question indeed. So I feel that there's a lot of energy that the youngsters build, uh, bring in. And there is a lot of, of course, experience. So I'm almost like the safety net. I can see what can go wrong. Okay. But the running, the innovation, the thinking, that is done to a large extent by the team. You know, there's always the stereotypes that when you make these traditional homemade food, it may not be... You know, we, we, we don't associate like high quality, high standards. We just say it's, a, you know, traditional homemade business. But whereas you think, oh, it's from this brand, it must be really, you know, how did you break that steel, uh, that mindset, Apurva, through this venture? Shibya, that's a very, very, very nice question. And, and, and I, I'm glad you brought it up because, uh, of course, see, the large companies will bring a certain standardization. They will bring in a lot of SOPs. And I have worked in large companies and you can't run large companies unless you are put in um, SOPs, whether it's on quality, whether it is just on the sheer scale of uh, of putting things out from the, to the market. Mm -hmm. Having said that, 
today, I think there's an increasing recognition, A, that if it is small, handmade, there is A, authenticity there. There is a certain traditional way of making, which was a better way of making where you didn't end up using a lot of preservatives and and you also were far more in touch with nature, seasons, what is endemic to your uh, the, the area that you stay in and therefore far more health, uh, healthy. And right. all our nutritionists are saying this. But we must, not, we must not misunderstand that just because it is being got from rural India or from smaller towns that there is a sacrifice or compromise in quality. You should go and my son says he goes to all the uh, self-help groups that we work with and he says that you know the the to a large extent the hygiene the quality the 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 surrounding the purity in the in, in, in the environment whether it is in the village the trees the, is far higher than what we are exposed to in urban India. So in that sense that and all these women have been making these products to sell to their own communities so they are they are very proud of it and thus the there is no quality concern of course we are bringing in a lot of um, sops also but there, there is there is no quality or hygiene uh, uh, concern at all at all okay. and i think they're recognizing that handcrafted has a certain heart of its own i mean i also read your uh quote somewhere, Apura, where he said, look for scalable ideas to be become sustainable businesses and employment generators. Tell me more about what potential you see here, uh, Apurva. See, one of the things I very strongly feel is that all of us, it is the duty of all of us, especially many of us who have had a lot of opportunities as we grew up uh, in our careers, did well there. The resources that we, as a result, uh, managed to accrue, it, there comes a time where you say that, how do I use my experience, my resources, my, my network, my learnings for the betterment of a larger community? Correct. for the betterment of society and each one of us has to do that we can't expect governments or policies to make the change because the problem is at a too large a level for me a very important part of ensuring that there is equality or there is uh, some form of empowerment is when financially people are uh, become independent because it's not that the um, uh, self help groups that we get our uh, products from or the tribals that we get our products from they they are living in a fantastic environment they're living amidst a lot of bounty nature um, <laughs> great air pure air pure water which we don't we don't have access to where they miss out it is in just having money so if you want to build a school there or a water pump there you don't have the money and you're not able to create marketplaces to market linkages right. which is where our strength comes in right and i think that's 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 how we each one of us have to think about solving for some big or small problem that we see around us only then will the world improve the country improve uh the planet improve right Correct, correct, correct. I mean, that's that's the that's what organizations are striving for. To you know, it's people, pl uh, planet, and profits. But then I don't think everybody anybody has got it got the equation right till date. <laughs> Absolutely, and and you know when we th think of this, the question that you asked on scale, um, we if we if we run it as an NGO, let us say, if we run it as for not pro not for profit, it's never going to become sustainable. Because you'll run it, you'll run it, you'll at best be able to help 25 girl children or at best be able to run a school. And But you're always scurrying around for money, etc. Whereas if you think of it that, okay, it's not that I want to make profit profits, but I want to make enough profits that I can make, build it to scale so that I can impact a larger community. How do you increase your deservability in your own eyes, even before they start recognizing you, how do you build your deservability, Apurva? So women, Shripriya, certainly suffer from this kind of uh, self-doubt all the time. Am I good enough? Um, and they, their inner critic is far louder than the inner cheerleader. 
which is this is a fact especially for women and i also have suffered from the same issues sometimes you know if there is some some failure that you encounter or you just are in a situation where it's just entirely a man's world no it is a patriarchal world in that sense then you are in a sense the outsider you are the odd man odd woman out yes. therefore you you worry that should you at all have been there mm. when these kind of doubts face me i again feel that i go back a lot into myself i look within and ask myself that do i deserve to be here have i done things and the answer is yes right one has studied hard one has certain talents and certain skills i have seen external success why am i not owning that success and owning success becomes very very important if you want to increase deservability you can't discount your success you can't externalize it and say oh it's not because of me but it's because of maybe you know a special situation a mentor a luck that gave me what i uh, did you have to be able to say no i got this because i worked hard for it i had uh, i had certain talents which or experience which let me achieve this success and therefore i own it so owning that success i believe is very important and recognizing when we are discounting it is also equally important correct correct so to stop discounting our achievements correct and sometimes many times we do it because we think you know we it's not nice i want to be seen as a nice person a nice person doesn't say good things about herself a popular i'd rather be seen as a um, as a friend a, a popular person than an effective person so all the time we are women especially are treading that very fine balance correct correct now you, your books have been something that many people would have read lady you're not a man lady you're a boss now what was that purpose that you had that propelled you to take this action to bring out these books what was that purpose you were seeing through them apurva shripya uh, you know i have started worrying about diversity and the fact that there are lesser women in the workforce very very long ago around 2010 2012 as a leader i would recruit a lot of women but very few pe- women would stay back we all know that you know half the women leave in the first decade of their working because of you know marriage and children and lack of support that they get from uh, society and their families and that bothered me a lot because i could see organizations were, lo- were losing a lot of talent because women were walking out and then i started asking myself what can i do what can i do i can talk to a few women i can mentor a few women but at a larger scale again scale is something that uh, that i think is important if you want to make any kind of impact how how do i impact women's thinking at a larger scale because there are ways there are ways which you have done which i have done to get out of that uh, that that trap of having to give up our careers just to take care of our uh, families so how can i give them a practical guide book and indeed i the purpose of both the books the purpose of both the books is to be a practical guide book for women in their first decade and then the, in the second decade of working of how to overcome the challenges and continue to remain engaged with their careers so what kinds of results have people called out and said hey this has made an impact has any, have you been able to hear such stories yeah yeah i constantly i constantly get women writing into me talking to me sending me messages and you know there are women from small towns from big towns at senior leadership levels at junior just starting off just get getting married they write to me saying you know your book is there at my bedside table i have cut out this chapter and pasted it on my um, uh, board i have taken these 10 mantras and this is how i actually convinced my in-laws when i got married that i should continue working and now they are so proud of me so every week in fact i keep on getting stories of um, you know of, of such women writing into me and saying how it changed their life and how should women amplify their voice uh, apurva because that's the biggest challenge there's a lot within an individual but sometimes it just doesn't come out even to ask or even to state your particular feeling it just exists within how do you think that this particular uh, shift of women should bring about 
so i think amplify amplification only happens when you are first speaking my worry is that women don't even bother to speak up mm. they remain silent so i think the first challenge itself is from silence to move to talking from letting go of your choices to move to saying that no i will make my own decisions very often what has happened is because we have been bringing up our daughters to be quiet uh, uh, not speak out too much not be very visible not be very vocal we say that we will take our decisions for our daughters as to whether they will study or not study who they will marry where they will work which city they will stay in what clothes they will wear whether they should put red lipstick or not i think we have we we have taken over control of our girls lives and as a consequence they have stopped taking their own decisions when you stop taking your own decisions your muscle of choice weakens and that's what i keep on telling all women that you have to strengthen that muscle that i will take my own decisions the moment you start taking your own decisions a to take your decisions you have to be vocal okay. you have to speak out you have to say i will decide what i want to wear i will decide what i want to eat i will decide who i will want to marry that itself is the vocalization we we seek from all our girls in in a desire to build a more empowered and equal world that is the way that is the way we can encourage our girls that you just speak up and you just take your own decision correct correct is there any particular story that's a com- that's a thread that you even that you recall that has made you who you are <laughs> uh so uh, i i i would say there are many any stories that have made me who i am i would definitely give a lot of credit to my parents to my mom who herself is a very strong individual and she was always very clear that you know she pushed us my me my sister that in the direction of saying that you have to be independent you have to be self Um, reliant and it was not never a choice it was this is how it has to be and the moment it becomes how it has to be then you uh, then, then then you grow up always assuming that yeah you know it, so it's never a choice in your mind ke oh once i get married i will not work it's always yeah i will continue i will continue to do uh, uh, what i have to do uh, as far as i myself and co- i'm concerned i've always again i don't know whether leadership is a is is something that you get trained to become or you're a natural leader i think i was always a natural leader i was on, all the, always the one who would get you know people to sit at the, the my younger siblings to sit around and i'd be the teacher of the class or you know the, the games that one would play with those type of play uh, uh, games i think i think i've always been a natural teacher and a natural uh, leader in that sense what are some of your inner battles that are not visible externally so see the inner battles that are not visible externally i would definitely say that uh, at different points in time at time you do suffer from self doubt whether you are pushing yourself out of a comfort zone whether you are uh, trying something new or you are in a new environment for example i am not a very social person so i actually suffer a little bit from social anxiety if i have to go for a party or a or a get together at the same time i'm a visible leader so if you put me in front of people and say now give them a lecture i will give a lecture but if you ask me to go and sort of go to a party and say hello and then after saying hello i don't know what else to ask people because i i just clap up so you know the the, the the inner me is not a very it's social reasonably shyish pers- pers- uh, private person but the outer leader has to be extrovert correct louder correct. bigger than what you are so that that always puts you in a slight imbalance with your own self it puts you in and that creates its own level of stress so i would say that reconciling what you have to be outwardly to what you are in uh, inwardly creates stress stress levels and a recognition that that is a stressor for me and therefore the finding as i told you right in the beginning of the interview those quiet spaces the time i'm alone i'm not talking locking myself in the room are very very essential for me to reach a level of balance so anything that is not to do with my work i try to do 
be more of a loner mm. so you'll not find me at too many social gatherings i don't have too many friends i don't have too many hobbies which are group hobbies i have a lot of things that i do alone so i think that that i would say is uh, and i think that recognition that this is a imbalance and we need to do something about it is something that again women are not able to do very well because they are so much living this life of being a professional or a, a wife a mother the moment they finish their 9 to 5 they come back and is a 5 to 9 again when they're sitting with their kids and their homework and the uh, taking care of the housework and then ensuring that you know everybody is fed and clothed properly and nurturing parents and um, uh, uh, taking care of um, you know so many uh, social Uh, requirements that their roles require that there comes a point and often times i tell women that you walk away from careers not because you you know don't want to work but you are just burnt out and you're burnt out because you're trying to be perfect in all these roles that you're playing right. so, so 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 the recognition that a th- this is not you can't be perfect everything and you can't do everything you can't be a multitasker the ability to walk away from so, some of these roles very right. Correct. So, from your vantage point, how are you observing this climate and culture for women uh, changing a purva? So, Sri Priya, if you look at the facts, the facts are very dismal. The facts and the numbers haven't changed. In fact, it has actually worsened. So, a few years ago, the the the, the World Economic Forum talked about it taking a hundred and six more years for there to be gender uh, equality. Now they're talking about some hundred and sixty seven more years for there to be gender equality because. in the pandemic many things worsened for the minorities is uh, women are in that sense a minority in in, uh, in the workspace in the labor space right so they they if there was a reduction in women working in the uh, of working women because they maybe had to they lost jobs they had to take care of ill parents or take care of the house so on and so forth so figure wise i would say that it's that the, the trends are not showing anything positive Right. however you know there's a lot of cause for optimism because i will say a, a the organizations governments there is a huge recognition that diversity actually give pays diversity converts to business results diversity will improve the gdp of a country right. diversity will ed- ensure that there is enough of a talent pool available for organizations so the recognition at an organizational level or at a government level is very very high and therefore the policies that you see and the differences that uh, both government has tried to make and organizations have tried to make to encourage women to stay back equally i think women themselves are are wanting wanting to achieve success in all their uh, spheres i think it's society now society of course is composed of you and me and our neighbors society is 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 us only but society there are social pressures which are holding women back so i think we need a a lot more men to become allies for the cause of diversity we also need a lot of more of the older women women who possibly didn't work our mothers our mother in laws our sister in laws to support us once these two constituencies also recognize and encourage and support the women around them that's when seismic change will happen correct correct what are the mental tweaks that can help women achieve more what are your i won't call them hacks it sounds a little negative but tweaks uh, that yeah. can help women achieve more <laughs> yes 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 so the mental tweaks which will help women achieve more one i definitely think having a positive mindset is very important we we often times assume certain things oh my god i have not worked for 3 years will i be able to ever get back into the workforce oh my god you know i don't think if i go and ask for help my mother in law will support me or or my boss will support me i i think first and foremost the willingness to try let me go and ask at worst what will happen somebody will say no so and that willingness to ask will only come when you go ahead with a positive mindset okay so i think that is that first and foremost thing is being more optimistic than pessimistic about possibilities the second thing is that the 
willingness to get out of your comfort zone. You know, we get, we we like comfort. All of us like comfort. I mean, look at me at 56, I became an entrepreneur. You know, leave, leave a fantastic job, a great corporate uh, role, a lot of power, a lot of, and, and come back and start something from scratch. That took a lot of courage, guts, etc. But the willing fitness to walk out of your comfort zone because the recognition that only when you walk out of your comfort zone will you grow and learn and I think the third thing is curiosity are we curious about our world around us are we curious about what's going on are we curious about what can we do to drive change I think these are these are very important. And the last thing, the last mental tweak, I would say that you are much more than the roles you are playing. You are much more than a wife and a mother and a housewife and a professional. You are bigger than the sum of all these parts. Correct. That recognition. Beautiful.